Hey guys, it is Tristan with Nerdette's Newsstand, and I did miss out on reviewing episode 7 of The Mandalorian called The Reckoning, and I want to give a brief TLDR of it before I go into episode 8, which was the season finale, and it was so well done. Now, um, right off the bat, before I even get into the review, obviously, huge spoiler warning, I tend to forget to say that, but if you're clicking on my channel, literally everything is a spoiler warning. So, I want to talk about this show because um, if you've been at my channel for any length of time, you realize that I don't know anything about Star Wars. I literally watched this as a joke video and then got addicted. Like, it was done so well. I loved everything about it. Um, I really enjoyed this. It, like I said in my previous videos, it made me want to know more about Star Wars. It made me interested, and I really enjoyed. And it wasn't just Baby Yoda. The Baby Yoda has a huge part to play in it. I love him so much. It, the whole storyline was absolutely perfect. It was wholesome and great. I loved every single bit of it. So if you are new to the channel, before I get in the, to the review, do not forget to subscribe. As always, if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button. And if you want to help support the channel, links, as always, are in the description. By hitting the like button, a comment, anything really helps out with this algorithmic funk I am in. So let's talk very briefly about episode 7. Like I said, it was called The Reckoning. And um, we see basically Xena at a fight club. And um, Amanda wants to team up with her. Ron Perlman basically reincarnates Robocop to be kind of a protector and a nurturer and um, they're hired those two are hired then to protect baby Yoda when they go into this conquest against Apollo Creed now um, there is a really cute part where um, Amanda and Xena are just you know messing around they're just arm wrestling and E.T. thinks that that Xena is hurting his daddy so he tries to protect him I love it so much so um, they do end up meeting up with Apollo Creed. Their um, camp is attacked, and Apollo is hurt pretty badly. He's got poison running through his veins. And to the rescue to heal him is E.T. I love him. Um, he does admit that um, it was a trap originally. But because Baby Yoda did heal him, he decided to change his mind. He sees what everybody else has seen in E.T. all along. So... Um, there ends up being a fight. We get black stormtroopers. First time I've ever seen that. Like, we're going to get a couple different color renditions of these things. And I think, like, I, the only thing I can imagine is that the colors of these are, um, reminiscent of their powers or something. I don't know. So, we see this big ship land. And they are basically in this, uh, I don't even know. It's just like a small store or something. And um, we see this big ship land, and we get the big bad Jerry Curl bad guy. And then we find out um, Ron Perlman was trying to get Yoda back to the ship, and he's dead. <laughs> like, that's the end of it. Like, you kind of don't know if he's dead at the end, but he's dead, and Yoda, baby E.T., my love, is captured! So, that is basically seven in a nutshell. But I didn't want to go through eight without saying at least what mildly happened because it was a cl huge cliffhanger you know they are all trapped yoda is in enemy hands and oh poor rock Perlman is dead he sacrificed himself for baby yoda so let's get into episode eight it is called redemption it was absolutely fantastically done and it opens up with um the two stormtroopers that stole et and they are on their little mopeds they're trying to deliver et they kind of keep arguing back and forth and they straight up hit E.T. like three times. They have him in this burlap sack and they straight up man hit my baby three times. Well, Robocop has become E.T.'s nurse, his protector. His protector droid since Ron Perlman did sacrifice himself and he shows up. He kicks these stormtroopers as he takes E.T. and a moped. We get to see um, E.T. cooing and having fun as he's riding with Uncle Robocop. So, it's getting real tense between Jerry Curl and the troopers. And then Amanda and Apollo and Xena are all trapped. 
And the bad guys um, set up this giant gun. And basically the losers club inside, they're trying to find a way to get into the sewer so they can escape because this, this gun that they've set up apparently is just going to wipe them to oblivion. Well, Jerry gives them till nightfall to decide if they want to surrender um, or be killed. So they have a little bit of time there. Um, we do get some flashbacks of Amanda as a child and he's hidden by his parents when their area is being attacked. He's hidden like Superman style and we come to find out that he was saved by Boba Fett and his buddies. So that's what made him essentially a Mandalorian. Well, Amanda is trying to find out if E.T. is safe. And here's him riding with RoboCop, kind of cooing over the um, walkie-talkie. And they are on their way back to China. Like, they're literally heading into danger. But RoboCop decides to fight and take out a good portion, like a lot, of the stormtroopers. And that's when everybody begins to fight. Everybody begins to help RoboCop. So I don't know how Jerry can just kind of walk through all the, you know, pretty colored bullets and not get hurt and go through this battle unharmed and then shoot one bullet at Amanda and he hurts him. Well, then he does shoot another and blows up something beside him and really hurts him. Um, he's hurt bad, like death bed bad. And Zena has to save him. So Jerry decides he is going to burn them out. And I love the interaction between Zena and Amanda. Like, they're totally gonna bang. I like them. I think that, like, I hate shippers, but I'm totally gonna ship them. Anyways, so Robocop does clear a way to get them into the sewer. And Zena promises to keep E.T. safe because at this point, Amanda can't go on. He's trying to have a warrior's death. Well, when all hope is lost and this red stormy guy is about to kill them all, E.T. uses his adorable little powers to stop the flame and actually reverse it and blow the flame outwards, which gives um, Zena time to save E.T., but they have to leave Amanda behind. Then we get the magical moment, like the moment we waited eight episodes for. Robocop wants to heal Amanda, and he does take off his mask. He has to in order to spray this stuff on him that's going to help, right? So is it fair to say with his voice and how he acted, I kind of expected him to be a little bit more attractive. Like I knew the guy that played him, but I really never looked him up. So. I was kind of disappointed, but even so, we do get the magical reveal of Amanda's face. And um, they all do get to reunite in the sewer, in the tunnels, um, only to find out that the entire fleet of the Mandalorians were killed, except for Golden Eagle Armorer. And she does give him a signet and like this awesome new jetpack that he is going to end up using. But they have to escape. So when the stormtroopers do come, Following them, obviously, Golden Eagle Armor is kind of a badass. She kills every single one of them, but they end up getting to this river of lava. And they have to use, like, this old boat and start down it, only to realize the whole thing was a trap. At the end of the lava river is a bunch of stormtroopers, and they're waiting, and they're dead. Basically, they're dead. So they have to come up with a new plan. And this is when RoboCop steps in and steps up. He takes um, the initiative to literally walk through the lava and use his self-destruct mode to kill all of these stormtroopers. Um, but also, at the same time, obviously it's a self-destruct mode. He kills himself, but he does all of this to ensure that not only Amanda lives, but E.T. lives too. So it was a really great moment. Like, I really liked seeing this is um, a good moment of redemption for him. So... It works. They made it, right? Of course, until Jerry and his fancy eyeball ship show up. And um, Apollo tells E.T. to use his fancy hand thing. And he just kind of waves. I love it so much. So Amanda decides it's time to bust out his jetpack and go to the source itself. And um, he wants to eliminate Jerry, you know, at the source. He wants to get rid of the bad guy. And I love this. I love seeing him with his jetpack actually working and everything else 
But the only thing is, the um, Golden Eagle armor said it would take time to get used to and he would have to train with it. And um, if we're being fair here, he used it perfectly right away. Isn't that kind of a Mary Sue thing? Anyway, so with every threat eliminated, um, because he does end up getting um, Jerry Curl to crush his ship, and all the threats are gone. Xena and Apollo decide to stay in China, and E.T. wants his daddy and grabs onto his leg to be held. It's freaking adorable. Um, Amanda flies back to his ship on his jetpack that he needs training with, but doesn't need training with at all. And um, he makes kind of like a small memorial for Ron Perlman and decides it's time to go, right? So I'm not sure at this point if he's trying to find E.T.'s family or he just wants to be free um, from all the bounty hunters and everything that's happened just to live his life and all the chaos. Um, I think we're going to have to wait for season two to see because there was confirmed that John Favreau did say season two would fall in, would come in fall of 2020. So we are going to get a continuation of this story. I absolutely think it's going to be great to watch. But um, the cult members start scavenging Jerry's ship only to find out that he survived the crash and has a badass sword. Like the coolest sword we've seen so far. So, the threat has not been completely eliminated, which leaves us a cliffhanger for season two. Now this story as a whole was fantastic. There was no politics, there was no SJW agenda, there was nothing bad in this story. It was just a good, heroic, wholesome story. I really enjoyed it. For a person that loves comic books but has nothing to do with Star Wars, this was a great introduction to the fandom. I absolutely enjoyed it. Let me know what you guys thought of the season finale or if you're looking forward to season two. And I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye. Hey, I want to give a huge shout out to my subscribe star and Patreon. You guys literally make this channel possible. Thank you so much, San Juro, Way Else One, BG Torrance. Black Knight Fool, Brucey, Grand Smear, Jeffrey Allen Carnes, Jeremy Burtz, Mike Buckner, Robert, and Timothy French. You guys are freaking amazing. <laughs> Thank you so much, and make sure you like and subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.